And just all around this little village are these kind of pock marks, these impact zones that you see. And beyond it, all the damaged vehicles, tanks, missile launchers, all of it. Just leaving the bare bones of what was clearly a massive battle in this little village. I mean, it's a tiny little village, but it's just strewn with burnt out vehicles and wreckage. Here you see a apparently a Grad missile launcher or something, a variant of the same. But then that's the militaria. That's the 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 stuff that's used in war. But mixed amongst all of it are homes and buildings and places where people should just be living their normal lives. It's war. And this is a burnt out APC. You know, and all the detritus, this is around here, all the burnt out stuff and the damage. As you're walking along, you try and be very cautious and careful about where you're stepping. You know, better to be over cautious than under cautious. There are a lot of recovery crews that are walking around here right now. But you don't know what's been cleared and what hasn't been cleared. Unexploded ordnance is a very serious issue in areas like this in my experience and so you try and be very careful careful about where you walk where you put your feet um again i think i'm relatively good here because there wouldn't be recovery crews walking around as kind of willy-nilly as they are but still you don't want to be the one guy who found that unexploded shell by stepping on it with your foot Sadly, this little village just on the outskirts of Bakhmut is right on the front lines. The people are visibly uh, frightened. They're concerned that maybe the war may be coming here. But for now, things are relatively stable. We've seen a lot of Ukrainian forces moving into this area uh, and uh, repositioning themselves as the fighting uh, shifts uh, after the fall of Solidar. Occasionally you can hear the sounds of artillery fire in the distance, in the not too far distance, and that is weighing on the nerves of the people here as well. But as long as we still have wires connecting on those poles, you can hear a shot there. Um, as long as we can still see the wiring there, we know that this place is relatively uh, stable and secure. But this is what the Russians are killing people for. This is the, the place that the war is being conducted over. And for what? To make sure that Russia still has a sense of empire? They hold little villages like this? At the end of the day, that is what it's all about. Can you hear the, I don't know if you can hear the small arms fire now as well still very much an active war zone. <laughs> so over there, of course, a Humvee mounting an M2 50 caliber machine gun, the good old Ma Deuce. This is your tax dollars at work, folks. Now here under camouflage is an MLRS system, the predecessor of the HIMAR system, which has been so useful for the Ukrainians. And we're pretty much in a just nondescript part of the forest. And I've been asking uh, the soldiers here, you know, 
how long do you stay in one position? And they're like, eh, a day or two if we're not shooting. But if we shoot, we move quickly. We get out of here because of potential counter battery fire. They're very happy with this system, they say. They're perfectly satisfied with what the capacity of what this thing can do. They keep it under wraps, camouflage, of course, and we've been given very strict restrictions on what we can film and what we can't film. So no faces, nothing that would identify the location of this position. Uh, and we've been asked to turn off all kind of electrical signals coming from our phones. So we basically put it into airplane mode. But this is what it's like, folks. This is the Ukrainian military in the field. This is where American taxpayer dollars and the Lend-Lease program uh, are being put into action on the ground, uh, on the front lines, very close to Solodar and to Bakhmut. The Ukrainians continue to tell us that they are stable, that the positions are uh, calculated, they are not in any kind of, uh, kind of mood of, of route, or anything like that. Um, but with the Bradleys coming imminently and potentially more and more different uh, weapon systems being sent here, um, the original uh, contingent of weaponry that we see here on the ground is just the beginning. And for now, the Ukrainians are glad to have this, but they're eager to see more. So that MLRS, the Multiple Launch Rocket System, position with the unit that is here in the middle of nowhere, this little forest. And I can tell you it's pretty darn cold. Um, they live here. They live here. If they aren't called upon to shoot, they can be here for a number of days. Uh, even if they have just maneuvered here in the post um Solodar collapse that has adjusted the front lines, but this is how they live, right? Okay, so they're they're over there with their positions, and the the rocket launch system, which even if they have to shoot, they're going to go in a different direction. But they're here long enough that they do this little dugout, and we'll just go down in here, and see how these guys live. Now, keep in mind they keep moving, right? So it's pretty bare. Not a lot of amenities. Basically just protection for the p potential Russian attack. And also pretty bare because at any moment they could be called upon to move. Go to a different location. Or just move so that they can shoot. Because they can't really shoot from here. They're in the middle of the forest for the protection it provides. But you're just living in the elements, such is the dedication of these soldiers. This is not easy living by any stretch of the imagination. Not, not boost. So this is the Donbass. This is the lay of the land. This is how it is out here. These wide open stretches of just uh, nothing. No tree cover, no cities, no villages, no nothing. And it always leads up sloping towards uh, an elevated point. And it's just like that mile upon mile where it's just a high ground down sloping into open plains where if you came out of the tree line and you're in an armored vehicle, and the, the Ukrainians have something positioned on one of the points of elevation, they can control entire swaths of Donbass just by strategically putting a couple of anti-tank systems, uh, hopefully provided by the international community, and they can control an awful lot of territory. This is why I think Donbass is such a difficult place to conduct modern warfare. It limits maneuver and it is very easy to control. So it's good that I came out here to see this because now I can relay to you why it is Donbass uh, has been such a deadly place for both armies.
here amongst all the dead sunflowers throughout the Donbass. This kind of armor is littered everywhere. It was probably something from the original onslaught back in February, but it's been lying out here since. It indicates another thing, which I'm trying to make the point of, as I said earlier, that this open stretch of ground, if you're trying to cross it, and you've got elevation out there covering this flat land, well, you're just a sitting duck out in the open. And I have very little doubt that part of the fate of this tank is because of that. Oh, you didn't cry.